we're here with George McFly, Jeffrey Weissman. Yes, it's George McFly the second, sort of. Junior? Well, not Junior, but uh, George the second only because, you know, Crispin Glover originated the role and he didn't return to do the sequel, so I stepped in for him. Now, how did you prepare for the role of George McFly 2? Did you go back and watch Back to the Future like a thousand times? Yep, you bet. Basically, for the recreations of uh, the scenes that they needed from the first film, they needed just that, an exact uh, duplication uh, from different angles of scenes that they needed uh, George for. Now, how did you get the part for this? By auditioning. Uh, first, actually, uh, first a... Uh, a friend of mine who's a, an agent for uh, lookalikes called me up and asked if I was the same height as Crispin Glover, and I said, no, he's, he's a little taller than me. I'd done a film with him at AFI years ago. Cool. And, uh, but nonetheless, I said, is it for the sequel of Back to the Future? Or future? And he said, well, technically, I'm not supposed to tell you this. And I said, OK. Uh, but nonetheless, I, I got a, an appointment to meet with the uh, assistant directors and uh, production people, and then I, uh, after they approved me, I went through the casting process and was originally told that I was just going to be the uh, photo double. And then slowly but surely after makeup prosthetics were being made for me and so on and so forth, I became uh, actually George. They used just a couple quick shots of Crispin from the first film, as you know, in, in the sequels. Now, do we know why Crispin Glover declined to do the sequel? We can speculate. We can speculate on uh, my, my understanding is that he wanted, uh, uh, I've heard $12 million in script control, and then I heard a uh, million dollars, and I, I don't know. I really wasn't a part of that. Uh, now, have you ever met Crispin Glover? Oh, yeah, I worked with him. Oh, did you? Yeah, in a film years ago at AFI before he uh, landed George in the first film. Now, what was the first scene you shot for Back to the Future 2? First scene we shot, well, uh, that would have been uh, the, the prom, prom scenes. Uh, you know, kissing Lorraine again and uh, the dance, the under, the under the sea dance. Now, how was it working with the cast? Did you ever work with anybody else from Back to the Future before this? No, actually, no, I hadn't. Um, and the, the cast were very friendly. Michael J. Fox is a very friendly man and uh, very warm. I, w I remember I was, I was singing a song that, uh, or rather, he was singing a song, and I filled in the lyrics. Um, this is before it was, you know, close or open with him very much and I, I continue the lyrics of the song and he said hey no one knows that song and I said oh yeah it's the young Canadians uh, uh, 1981 or 1980 and he said no one knows that and so that sort of opened up and he, he uh, invited me to his dressing room and we sat and chatted and had a beer you know he's a nice man what was the most difficult scene in Back to the Future 2 to shoot most difficult scene wow well re recreating uh, Knocking Biff out was pretty difficult, and and uh, uh, I felt for Leah Thompson when we had to do the kiss at at the prom because uh, she was ki kissing prosthetics, and I was going, oh, this must be really uncomfortable for her. But most difficult, I think, was probably, uh, or the m hardest time I had was when uh, in the future in 2015, when playing George McFly, age 77. Uh, I, at one point, um, as you know, I came in upside down because George's character had been hit by a, a car that had fallen out of the sky on the golf course. Oh, we, we never knew about that. Oh, I, I, I guess I was cut out then, too. A lot of things were cut out. Did, you, did yeah. you actually film the car falling on you? No, no, we didn't, oh. we didn't film that. Just It was an uh, explanation of why George was being suspended upside down by a Northolux of the future and was floating around with his remote control. Uh, so, to make a long story short, uh, I was in a body cast uh, that had a, a pole going through the back of it that went through the set and with the Teamster on the other end on the wheel to spin me for the special effect. Now, the special effect was cut out of the film, but we filmed it nonetheless of uh, Lorraine comes over with the pizza, George's slice, and says, uh, George, rotate your axis for dinner. And, uh, and I, as George, old George, said, uh, OK, four, and did a golf swing and went <laughs> and, and spun. Now, during one of the takes, I was put into this, this body cast, uh, cinched in basically and then the the costume was put in uh, or put on over the body cast and then I was spun upside down well I, I, I guess at one point I didn't take get a good breath and uh, had a, a little semi catastrophe a claustrophobic experience where I couldn't catch my breath and I was upside down and I was flailing and oh blacking out was terrible and uh, they 
quickly had to stop the scene and, and uh, get, get the costume off and get me out. And I had to walk away for a little bit, uh, which, you know, that I thought might be somewhere around the realm of $50,000 a minute or whatever to, to hold up the production. I was, I was pretty intimidated by that, but nonetheless, I needed to take the time so I could go back and work. And uh, I think that was probably the hardest thing. And, and uh, some of the special effects, you know, floating upside down were, were pretty difficult. Now, how long were you in the prosthetic makeup for? Six weeks. Six weeks. Well, the, the uh, it, you know, young George, then doing old George, and then middle-aged George, 47 for Back to the Future 3 at the end there. Uh, it was uh, about six weeks shooting. Now you have photos here of uh, yes. your work in Back to the Future 2. This is me with my own face, mm -hmm. and Leah Thompson saying, who are you? <laughs> Which, yeah. Anyway, so... It that was uh, during the filming of part two, you yes, know, during a break or something? Yeah, during a, uh, the end of a day, because um, my face is a little shiny. I think I had just taken the makeup off. It took uh, over four hours a day to um, put on these prosthetics. This is, of course, the Under the Sea dance and just before the kiss. And uh, this, I, I wanted to give you a comparison shot. This is uh, in the background in two. You can see us when uh, Marty from two is standing outside the door. This Marty from one is running out the door and will knock Marty from two out, who is being called out by Biff outside the door. So this is actually in the background, if you look closely. Now, this is Crispin from the first film. And I, I just wanted to show you the, the comparison. A great deal of uh, detail was uh, a great deal of care was taken to the to the detail, and once again back back to the, uh, the under the, under the sea dance. This is a pretty good shot of of that makeup. Mm -hmm. Makeup was designed by Ken Chase, who did the makeup on the first film. He also was famous for doing uh, the makeup on Wild Wild West, uh, all the different uh, things that uh, Artemis Gordon's character wore, and Ken Chase. There's a famous scene right there. Yeah. Uh, Biff has got me in the parking lot there. This you can see through the window uh, when Marty's looking for the um, the almanac in the in Principal Strickland's uh, uh, office. Now this is a shot from the first film. That's Crispin there, and and this is me. As you can see, we had to do it from different angles. Now, how much pressure was he actually putting on you there? Oh, Tom Wilson. Oh, he was a he was a monster. He was killing me. He was killing you. Oh, it was horrible. You are about ready to you believe anything. You are about ready to deck him with a smirk on his face. Yeah. I guess he likes pain. He's a great guy. I know you. You got an interview with. him. I've interviewed him, and he is a, a real normal guy. He's not. He's not a butthead like Biff. Yeah. No, he's a sweetheart, and uh, I have some of the. They gave me some of the uh, screen tests to study, and uh, in some of them, you can see him at work, coming up with uh, some of the lines that were actually used in the film, like uh, uh, McFly. What is McFly? Uh, an Irish bug. You know, he, he came up with that in one of the screen tests. And he's getting into old George. There's old George McFly now. How long did that take to put on? This was four hours, too. Uh, Fourteen different pieces, whereas, the, whereas this uh, was just mainly one, two. This was more like four or five pieces, plus the wig. And, and this was 14 different pieces. Ken Chase, unfortunately, got fired into the shooting. Mike Mills, who did, who was a foreman on Beetlejuice, uh, Zolan, Zoltan, Zoltan and his wife who got the Academy Award for Mask, uh, Kenny Myers, um, uh, there, were, there were quite a few, Sonny Berman, quite a few wonderful makeup artists on the, on the shoot who took over. Now, I had some problems with my old age makeup in that uh, they had a power failure once, and so the uh, refrigerator that they were keeping the prosthetics um, Ch chilled and shut down, so they got hot, and so they shrank. So quite often, not all the pieces, here's a better shot of it, not all the pieces would, would uh, meet, so they'd have to putty in, and I remember they gave me uh, Michael J. Fox's eye bags. Yeah, and I was going to say, that looks a lot like Michael J. Fox's forehead. Yeah, uh, whose forehead? Was that Michael J. Fox's forehead? They gave me someone, uh, yeah. Leah's eye bags and Michael's forehead, or all sorts of different things. It's a combination of everybody in the cast. They pieced me together, yeah. So, technically, you would, look, you would look more like your future son, or your son at that time. Okay. So whatever that means, go on. There you are, upside down after being hit by a car, as we established earlier. And, and, uh, and here's Grandpa's little pumpkin. Uh, um, 
Uh, Michael J. Fox is my granddaughter, Marlene. You know, a lot of the questions I get were, uh, were you really, were you really floating, and were the hoverboards really floating and all? And it was, you know, I don't like to shatter illusions, but no, it was special effects. There were wires hung by wires. You bet. And there's the scene that was cut out. Yeah, this is this is uh, when I'm in the body cast. I look a little bulky, and Lorraine's giving me the the pizza. Um, it's a scene, very famous Tondro process of this camera where they could actually edit for in the video playback and then and see what it, the final is going to look like where Marty Jr. passes the ice, Marlene passes the iced tea to uh, Marty who passes it to uh, Marty Jr. whatever, the Michael J. Fox playing all three roles and uh, the Tondro is named, uh, the Tondro camera is named after the gentleman who invented it. And I guess that was a little too important to show uh, George getting his pizza and doing his rotation. But nonetheless, it was a lot of fun. This is uh, a shot, if you can get it, of how I took my breaks. That's how you took breaks? Lying down on a step ladder? Yep. And as you can see, there's uh, Robert Zemeckis in the background and, and Don here from Industrial Light and Magic uh, doing the special effects. He's, he worked on Jurassic Park, and I think they're currently on Flintstones. This, in fact, uh, Dean Cundy is shooting Flintstones movie right now. This is my stand-in, or my hang-in, as it were. And Bob Zemeck is here. Bob Z. And this is the famous banana eating scene, which was also deleted. I, d I doubt seriously they'll do a number four, but yeah, who knows, maybe a TV series. Well, there was an animated series. Do you think that maybe if that will come back, you'll do George McFly voiceovers? Um, yeah. Sure. That's a, it's actually highly doubtful. I, 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 I don't uh, want to rain on anyone's parade, but I don't, I don't think that, I think they put it to bed pretty safely and soundly at, at the end of three. Um, but uh, for myself personally, I, I did uh, after Back to the Future a small part in For the Boys with Bette Midler and uh, it's a guest spot on Saved by the Bell as Screech's guru. Um, and see what else. Uh, little bit with Chip and Pepper on their cartoon spectacular and I'm, I'm working currently at Universal Studios in Hollywood as uh, the first string Stan Laurel and Charlie Chaplin as you guys might might have seen today and uh, Groucho Marx from time to time and I travel all over the nation sometimes the world doing these characters for the studio or outside contractors and uh, you know I'm just getting together with a new agent and hopefully go continuing on the career.